So to add on to what the other session had ended, apologies, I have some issues with the um, with the network and with sound. Um, I was saying in terms of prayer, very important in prayer is to follow the, litur the liturgy and to do morning and evening prayer as we are requested to in our in our um, in our work that we do as parish ministers, priests, clergy, deacons, and anybody who really works in the church is required and, and asked to pray twice a day in morning and evening prayer in what we call the offices, which we can find in our prayer books. And for more information on that, you can read the rubrics and we will have a session on prayer next year. But I thought I'd just spend a short space of time to actually give you some background to what do we pray and and why do we pray? So it's not a theological um, understanding. It's it's a short um, reflection from my side. Is in terms of when we look at prayer, we look at prayer as something that is given to us that we can commune with God, we can commune with others, and there's various ways we can commune by just walking around. We can be in an attitude of prayer. We can be in, in our in creation, in the world, in how we are engaging with different areas and different um, ex experiences. And just by seeing and, and touching and feeling and experiencing creation, come Lord Jesus, what, what are you saying to me, God? Where are you, God? So we mustn't box it into saying, I'm an Anglican, I have to do two prayers a day. It's I am a Christian, and one of the things that Jesus always did before a big event, or actually at any time, was he took himself off and he prayed. He prayed at different times, and we have different examples of those prayers. In the Garden of Gethsemane, before he died, uh, the Mount of Transfiguration, all these types of things, God, through Jesus, was always praying, and Jesus was always praying to his Father. So it's important that we come back to understand who do we pray to and who is God for us and how do we pray? For the Bible will say to us, you go into a room, you kneel, you pray on your own. But to pray with others, to pray in different situations, to pray in church, it is a very vital thing that prayer becomes the thing that drives us through life, that gives us the experience of life. So as we build and as we grow in our spiritual walk, we need to nourish ourselves. And that is what prayer does, is it brings us back to what it is that we are doing in prayer. And as a lot of people will say, and as I mentioned earlier, you can't just do liturgical prayer and pray the Lord's Prayer all the time. You need to get into that attitude of how to develop into it. So there's a lot of resources that we have. The morning and evening prayer, which is in the in the prayer book. Straight after that, you get one of the most beautiful parts of the prayer book, an, an old prayer of the liturgy, uh, of the litany, apologies. And the litany is really a time when we can just pray and you can take little sections. So if you only have five minutes to pray, and you just want some guidance, there's the litany. If you have half an hour and you want to read the scriptures, which is also part of prayer, and it, and it aids us to think, it aids us to be in the presence of God, we do our morning prayer, we do our evening prayer together with liturgy, then we can do uh, the litany. We've got other prayers. We've got a whole heap of prayers of thanksgiving for different occasions, for the church, for the world, for general, for thanksgiving. And you will always find that that's the order. You always pray for the church and the government and what is, what is happening in the world. Then you bring it back to creation. What is happening in the world, the peace of the world, where we are, how we are doing that. Then into praying for others, praying for the, the people that are dependent on us, those that we give, give um, that have asked for our assistance and our help in doing certain things. 
And then we pray for those who are sick and need our prayers, ask for our prayers, and finally we will pray for those who have departed this life, for the faithfully departed and the year's mind, or those who have died at a certain place and time. And that structure of prayer, if you look at prayer A in the prayer book, you will see that that is the, the structure. Prayer C, uh, you will find all of them have a structure of the church, the world, the others, and then uh, the needs, and then for those who, are, who have died. So it's important to get into the rhythm, but it's also important not to stick in the rhythm and just be caught in the rhythm. Live a life of prayer that we live pray. So different things at lunchtime, if you can get hold of or you've got access to praying at home, a tiny little booklet, but it's got another set of little prayers for us. Um, there's day and night offices. Uh, there's the Angelus. There's different ways, preparation ways, um, home and family prayers. It's important to, get, to gather a whole, as a parish minister, to gather different pray ways. This is an Anglican um, publication. So you've got praying at home, you've got the prayer book, you've got different prayers in both, you've got different, different areas and uh, different uh, resources. So find out and and start practicing in your own life, praying in the rhythm of these steps, so that when you are preparing prayers one day for your priest, if you're not already doing it, um, or carrying on doing it in this lockdown and sending in prayers to your priest, or you're not praying with people on the phone, do it for yourself. Spend some time, even if it's once a week, you sit down and write out the prayers. Spend time each day just seeing what is your prayer life? Who do you pray to? How, what are you asking in prayer? Is it about asking? Is it about receiving? Is it about thanksgiving? What is a trend that you are finding? And if all else fails, the best thing is to just pray the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, pray the Lord's Prayer. I pray it. Read every line. Go through each, each line. What do those mean? What does it actually mean for us today to pray our Father? And really start as parish ministers. It's a good time now when we've got the time period not to have to go to different services and we are at home, is that when we pray, write them down, start talking to each other, phone people, ask them, how do you pray? Ask your priest and really spend time with God. Because the communing of God is the connection back to God that we enter in a form of praise. God, you are so awesome. Glory be to you. The gloria is the praise part. Then you come back to the thanksgiving. And then we go into the Eucharist. If you are following Eucharist as spiritual communion in uh, at your mass, uh, your online mass or However you are communing with God, it is important that every part of it is a prayer. And the thanksgiving prayers of the Eucharist become, thank you, God. Thank you for your son. Thank you for Jesus. Because that is what we are following, is the life and the example that Jesus Christ has given us. So I trust that you will continue your prayer life. And as parish ministers, you will grow in your prayer life to be able to find what are the next steps that you need to take, what are the books that you might need to read. We will be sending out um, emails. Uh, you will have my email address uh, shortly. Feel free because we can make, make things available to you. Um, we can put something on, online for you and we can refer you to different things. And if you can't see it online yourself, Speak to somebody who can. Speak to your priest. And I pray that we will, as a community of, of believers, a community of people and leaders within the church community, we find ourselves that we will be in an attitude of prayer, praying for others, praying for ourselves, praying for the world, because prayer brings us back 
to the relationship with God. Prayer brings us back in our minds, our souls, our bodies, and our actions to constantly be going back. What is God wanting? What is God saying? Sometimes prayer is just silence. Silence. Reading a scripture and just reading it and silence. Or just reading a scripture and, and talking to the people that we live with. There are many, many ways. In months to come, you will find different ways. Next year, when we're back with our training sessions, we will be able to share with you some, some insights into the prayers in, the, in the, the Eucharist. For now, be in an attitude of prayer, and my prayer is that you will find the right people to walk with, you will share prayers, and that you will find that your prayer life is actually growing in these days by taking your life to God through prayer. So I hope you've had a blessed day, or you will have a blessed day, and that you will, you will find that this month, in, in whatever you do, take it to God and pray. And my prayer is that you will find that God will start talking to you through different things, whether it's creation, yourself, or through others. Answer all those questions. Keep praying. And God bless. Keep warm and keep safe.